Hey everyone! Today I'd like to tell you about how China has achieved such impressive success in technology and innovation, and how Chinese tech companies are emerging as true all-round leaders in the global tech industry. Recently I stumbled across an amazing article by Kyle Chen, a researcher from Princeton University and the Rand Corporation. In his article he breaks down how China has built this intricate web of overlapping industries that grow together and boost each other through a strategy called co-evolution. It's a totally different approach from the ecosystem competition model that most American big tech companies follow. Let's explore how this works, starting with their EV industry and going beyond. First, let's kick things off with a simple question. Why is China so successful in something like the electric vehicles? The answer is, they don't just have one industry. China's got electric vehicles, sure, but also smartphones, batteries, industrial robots, various sensors and a ton more. And these industries don't just coexist, they intersect and help each other grow. Kyle Chen compares it to putting together a puzzle. The more pieces you have, such as technologies, suppliers, expertise, the easier it is to complete the picture. When these industries team up, you get this cumulative effect. One pulls the others along, and they all get stronger. To see how this plays out, let's zoom in on a concrete example, the Chinese EV industry. It's not just about cars. It's a whole hub of connected industries evolving together. Here is how it's set up. First, lithium batteries. China has long been a leader in the production of batteries for smartphones and laptops. Companies like CATL and BYD took that know-how and quickly adapted it for electric vehicles. Here is fun fact. CATL controls 60% of the global battery market and is even building factories in Europe, so now their batteries are powering BMWs and Volkswagens. Second, smartphones and electronics. The consumer electronics sector handed EV makers things like touchscreens, control systems and other smart tech. Take Xiaomi for example. They were making smartphones and smart appliances, then in just four years they launched an electric car and it's already selling. And compare that to Apple, which spent a decade tinkering with an EV prototype and came up empty-handed. The next one is traditional car industry. Since the late 2000s, China has been the world's biggest producer of regular cars and parts. That handed EV companies a ready-made supply chain. Brakes, seats, mirrors, all sourced locally plus industrial materials like steel, aluminum and plastics. China produces more of these than anyone else in the world, letting local EV firms collaborate with suppliers to fine-tune them to their specs. And then we've got electric motors. That's where Innovance comes in, straight out of Shenzhen, often called Little Huawei since it was started by some ex-Huawei engineers. Initially they started with basic motors, and now build complex systems for EVs. And what about leaders and sensors? Those come from Hesai, Robosense and even DJI. Yep, the drone folks. These are key for driver assist systems, so the car can see the road. Or consider industrial robots. China's been using them in car manufacturing for years. First from foreign players like ABB and Fanuc. But now more and more from local firms like Innovents and Xiasan. That expertise carried over to EV production. And now those same robots are working across tons of other fields, from shipbuilding to solar energy. And BYD, they have even taken it further. In 2024, they started making electric cargo ships to haul their cars across oceans. Same batteries, same motors, 
and now co-evolutions pulling shipping into the mix. So, as you see, the EV industry isn't just about cars. It's a springboard for a whole network of tech, and it's going global. But what is co-evolution really about? Let's break it down with a nature example – bees and flavoring plants. Picture this. Way back most flowers were simple, with nectar wide open for any insect to grab. But some plants had deep tubes with tasty nectar. Among bees, some had short tons, others long ones. What happened next? Simple flowers got pollinated randomly. Pollen went everywhere, and they didn't produce many seeds. But those deep tube flowers? Only bees with long tons could reach in, and the pollen hit the mark every time. Those plants started reproducing more. Long toned bees won too. They got more nectar where competition was low. Over time, more of those flowers and bees popped up. Eventually, the flowers evolved into complex shapes – long tubes, bright colors, strong scents. While bees grew even longer tons and learned to spot their flowers. Now they rely on each other. Plants need bees to pollinate, bees need plants for food. That is co-evolution – mutual growth where both sides lift each other up. That's exactly how it works in China. Take for example EVs and batteries. The electric vehicle boom tapped into an existing battery production scale, and the rising demand gave battery companies more orders and experience. Or let's take a look at solar power. China makes 80% of the world's solar panels, and now they are pairing them with batteries to store energy overnight. Companies like Longi and CATL team up. Solar tech improves batteries, and batteries make solar more reliable. Only in 2024, China exported $5 billion worth of those systems to Europe. And how about drones and farming? DJI isn't just making usual drones and sensors for cars. They've also got agricultural drones, like the Agress T40. These drones fly over fields, spray fertilizer, and monitor crops, all using the same sensors. In China, 30% of farms already use these drones, boosting both industries at once. What's driving all this? First, supply. Local suppliers in upstream industries make sourcing parts easy to get, and let companies tweak them to fit. Second, demand. Domestic buyers keep demand steady, and the government steps in with things like import tariffs or local content rules. The third one is technology. Knowledge spills across sectors, like how making polysilicon helps both solar panels and chips or how inverters work for solar, EVs, trains and telecom. Fourth, scale. When one product serves multiple industries, it gets cheaper to produce. Lithium batteries, for instance, power electronics, EVs and energy grids – huge cost savings there. And if there is a weak link, like not enough homegrown chips, the government jumps in. For example, in 2023, Chinese government invested $20 million into semiconductors to help Huawei and SMIC catch up to global giants. It's all about the system. But co-evolution is just the start. Now China is seeing tech convergence. Once phones and cars used to be separate worlds, now they are merging into one. On the software side, it's operating systems, platforms, AI and data processing. On the hardware side, it's batteries, motors, sensors and chips. Chinese companies are turning into tech Swiss army knives. They start in one field, then branch into everything nearby. Here are some examples. Xiaomi goes from smartphones to EV. DJI from drones to leaders. BYD from EV to semiconductors. XPen is making humanoid robots. Baidu is jumping from search engines to self-driving cars. 
and Huawei is even building smart cities. Their cameras, sensors and AI now monitor roads and greenhouses. Oh, and nearly every big player has got their own language model now. It's practically standard. Once they used to look at Google or Apple. Now they are more like Elon Musk's Tesla and XAI. His companies lean on each other tech-wise, smoothly shifting EV tech into energy storage or satellites. And of course, at the heart of the co-evolution strategy in China is Huawei. They are everywhere – smartphones, networks, EV, chips and AI. They are the ultimate tech all-rounder, tying China's ambitions into one big system. Even when there is a weak spot, like reliance on foreign chips, the government steps up, pushing for homegrown solutions. So, as you see, China's unique path isn't just competition like American big tech companies, it's co-evolution. Industries growing together, overlapping and making each other stronger. The proof is in the results. While some spend 10 years on prototypes, others launch entire industries in just 4 years. And what do you think of this approach? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks again and bye!